Howdy, everybody. I'm going to read tonight a little selection from the book Visiting Tom. That is Tom right there on the cover. Um, so one of the things I've always loved about my neighbor Tom is he's real good at, he's common sense sort of guy, but he, he's also really good at bringing me right down to earth with a single comment. And I had gotten myself an old scythe. I bought it at an auction. Actually, my buddy Mills bought it at an auction, which is a whole other story, which is in the book. Um, we did some remote bidding, just like they used to do at Sotheby's, those famous places. Only I was in a 1992 Silverado plow truck calling in my bids to my buddy Mills. Anyways, I'm already off track. The point is, I bought this old scythe, and I learned how to sharpen it, and I studied how to swing it, and how to lower the heel of it as you swung, and I got better and better with it. And um, This is a section where I start telling Tom about how much I love it. It starts out with me in the field, cutting oats. I settle into the groove of the work then, dropping the stalks in rough rows. Come winter, I'll fork them into the chicken coop. The birds will eat the oats and some of the weed seeds, and the straw will make fresh bedding. They'll poop in it and scratch at it and break the stalks down, and by spring, we'll have a rich pile of compostables. When all is said and done, I'm not sure I want to do the math on how this all works out financially. The truth is, I'd likely lend the family more stability if I just bought bags of feed and bales of straw and spent more time in my writing space finishing the next book or pitching the next magazine article or putting words to a song. But there's something at work here that goes beyond financials. It nibbles at the edge of self-sufficiency, but that's just a fraction of the impetus. It is also in part tied to the idea of putting my soft palms to the worn handles and imagining the hands placed there before mine, how much rougher they must have been and how many countless hours their owners must have toiled to lay the smoothness in the grain. There are also the contemplative aesthetics. Even as the heart thuds and the sweat falls, I am appreciating the graceful curve of the wooden shaft. Its very shape is a sculptural implication of patience and craft and the, and the anatomical terms of the scythe, the nib, the heel, the tang, the snath, are the poetics of another age. But this is all peripheral. What really puts me out here in the field is the fact that I was raised by farmers and loggers and have never shed the atavistic sense that the worthiest work is accomplished through force applied via the body. The cutting and the gathering play counterbalance. The cutting and the gathering play counterbalance to weightless electronic letters or stories told into thin air. I'm feeling what Matthew Crawford in his book Shop Class as Soulcraft describes as the sense of agency and competence associated with manual labor. This whole philosophical angle has its limits. One day Tom and I are rummaging in his machine shed for a piece of steel when I spy a scythe hooked in the rafters, just the same as mine. I start telling Tom about my scythe and how I've been using it. I tell him about how I sharpen it, using the three stones in sequence, keeping them wet, how I follow the arc of the blade. Yeah, sounds like you're doing it about right, he says, and inside I glow a little. There are certain skills a man ought to have, and putting an edge on a blade is prime among them. To have Tom's imprimatur in this instance is doubly meaningful. I tell him, when I do that at readings, I actually say to have Tom's approval. Sometimes you overdo it. I tell Tom how I've been refining the way I swing the scythe, hoping he might give me some advice on how to better handle the thing. But he just says, yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. I'm feeling expansive now, not just because of his approval, but because I'm imagining it must be heartening for him, the old timer, to know that some of us in the trailing generations are taking up the old ways again, studying them, or doing our best to preserve fundamental traditions in the face of an uncertain future. The scythe is a cultural baton, and we are passing it down the generations. You know what really works good? asks Tom. I give him my full attention, determined to keep my scatterbrain in focus so that whatever secret he is about to share, I will be able to carry it forward, hand it to my own children, be a living link. Yeah, one of them gas-powered weed whackers. Thanks, Tom. Got one of them, too. Hang in there, everybody. Uh, do what you're doing. Take care of the people who love you. And uh, take care of those who... Don't have.
somebody maybe right at their elbow. Check in with somebody. We've been calling some folks. Anyway, visiting Tom. If you want to listen, there's an audiobook version of this too. Most of my books are an audiobook and I, I read them. But uh, thanks. Hang in there. See you around. Bye.